Good morning here. I'm in San Diego this morning, and I'm so happy to have our guest. I'm Valerie Milano with the Hollywood Times and Aspiring Magazine. And uh, yeah, I'm going to have her introduce herself. Thank you so much. Thanks, Val, for inviting me. I'm Geraldine Glass. I'm, uh, what should I say? I'm, I'm a musician. I'm a singer. I've been in music my entire life. And I got led through the passing of my son nine years ago to really dive deep into sound as a healing modality and music as medicine. So I'm so passionate to share what that means for all of us. Yes, and I'm so happy to have you here. And we're going to listen to some of her music in a little bit as well. So, um, and since you mentioned this loss of yours, I, I'm going to start with that question. Um, as someone who has experienced personal loss and healing through sound, how has your personal journey shaped uh, your approach to sound healing and what message do you wish to convey to those seeking healing through your work? Wow. So this is my, this is my son. He was 19, uh, Dylan. And um, I guess, you know, when I got the news that he passed away, I mean, as you can imagine, you know, your life just stops, your heart shatters. And, you know, it's unbelievable. It's not your child. It can't be. And that began this journey because... I had to understand at some point that there was a bigger picture, that his death wasn't in vain. And what has come to be is on the night that he died, and I live in south, south of, in Los Angeles um, near the ocean, and I walked down to just be comforted by nature, and I saw this huge shooting star, Valerie, and I, I mean, I've never seen a shooting star in the city. It's too bright. I've seen it in the mountains, I've, but I heard whoosh. And the stars seemed to cross the L.A. basin and land in the mountains behind L.A. And I heard his voice, Mom, Mom, it's like we always talked about. I'm home. I'm with God. And it was just like, wait, what just happened? Because, you know, I was trying to process the reality that when death happens, it's final, right? And, and yet there was this vibration, this communication that began that night that has turned into this wondrous, I am in such gratitude for his presence. And I want to share with everybody that this is possible. Like it's possible to see beyond the visible and it's possible, you know, what I always knew as a musician, I got to sing um, on Broadway and then classical music all around the world. Like I always recognized that music has this power to bring us to this place of the sublime, to bring us to a place of the ineffable. There's no words for it. Music takes us deep. Music takes us wide. Music takes us soaring. Music has the ability to really calm our nerves. And what happened was using music and using sound, especially of the crystal singing bowls that you see behind me, what happened was my mind began to focus. My mind began to become still. And in those moments that I would work with the bowls and work with energy medicine, I would drop deeper and deeper into myself. And Valerie, a few medical doctors asked me to go on antidepressants and I just felt like, why? If, you know, what I really want from the medicine is I want it to bring my son back and that's not gonna happen. So, you know, if I take a pill, I understood I would numb myself. And so gently and with music, it took me into the place of breathing and feeling the grief and expressing it you know, when we work with certain musical intervals or when we work with certain ways of playing the bowls, it creates a sacred structure. And suddenly what I found was I was in talk therapy, sometimes six hours a week. And suddenly what I found was the music was helping me go really inside, feel those feelings that you just go, no, <laughs> I don't think I'll have that. I don't want that. Right. But it would help me to go in there and feel them. And then what I would recognize is that those feelings were dissipating, they were dissolving, and I watched joy come back into my eyes and to come back into my life. And you know, this was a process, I'm not saying it happened overnight, but 
I feel like I'm a living example of what it means now in this field called music as medicine. And I was honored to speak uh, in Washington, D.C. last December for a, a program, Music as Medicine, for the Kennedy Center, the National Endowment for the Arts, and the National Institutes of Health, and the Renee Fleming Foundation. And it was leading scientists, researchers, medical doctors, and we all, I think, understand on some level that healing is not necessarily happening with a protocol. Healing happens on a bigger picture. And I think this is what I, I'm so passionate to share with people because I'm living it. Yeah, an extensive background. And as a singer, meditation leader, and sound healer, can you share a bit about your journey into sound healing and how you came to specialize in using crystalline uh, instruments. Sure, so I found the bowls like 18 years ago. I was living in Germany, so my son was born in Germany. I was having a beautiful career as an opera and concert singer there, and I, I started a children's foundation um, where the principle was that we would create original productions for young people, and then the money we raised from those productions would go to music therapy. So I always had a, an idea, and I always had a, a, a wisdom about that Sound really is a medicine, but it, it didn't become what it is now until Dylan died. And after that, it was just like, okay, I mean, again, this can't be in vain. There has to be a bigger picture to it. And so, um, as I said, I've been playing the bowls for 18 years. And when he was a little boy, I got them when he was seven. He loved them. And I'd bring him to bed and I'd play the bowls. He'd say, Mommy, Mommy, bring to bed with my sound blanket. I'll put a bowl on my tummy. That's the t that sound tickles. You know, so he knew the bowls really well. And as part of that Kids Foundation, uh, a lot of the young people entered a, a national contest in Germany called Jugendmusikzeit. And it was like a contest to nurture the love of music in children. And he entered in the area of musical theater. And he had to have a 15-minute program with five songs and a choreography and a monologue. And he made it to the semifinals, and a week before, he, he says, Mom, 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 something's happening with my voice. And he began to have his voice change. And I'm, I'm a professor of voice, but I had never at that point helped a young man through their vocal change, right? And the larynx is getting five times as big, and it's, it's a whole thing. You don't know, is your voice going to crack? Is it going to keeks? Is it, you know, what's it going to do? So we worked with the bowls, Valerie, and he loved them. He knew them since childhood. He, he was 13 then, so he'd been playing them for six years. And so we carefully worked, and I would have him play a bowl and just, ah, ah, mm, mm, and his voice stayed open, right? And I watched him. So we used one bowl that he particularly loved, which was a little citrine. So the bowls are pure quartz, and they get infused with alchemies like gemstones and earth substances, precious metals, um, uh, minerals from the earth. And he loved that citrine. And citrine, what I understood later, is about your personal power, your self-esteem, your confidence. It's yellow. It's the power of a thousand suns in your belly. And the note we were working with was G, which in the chakra system corresponds to the throat. So I watched him sail into his program and say, hi, my name is Dylan. And since one week, I'm no longer a soprano. And I was like, oh my goodness, like he can stand there in this vulnerable place and have humor. And so fast forward, as I started to work with the bowls for myself and then started, I started playing for cancer patients was the first thing because I was in so much grief that I felt if I don't do something to help someone else, I'm never going to get out of my bed. I mean, that's it for me. I'll never get out of my bed. So I called the Cancer Support Community, which is a nonprofit that... Um, helps cancer patients and their families all across the world um, to deal with cancer in, in more natural ways. And it's interesting, one of the medical doctors that I work with at hospice talks about that there may not be a cure for everything, but everyone can heal. And what is meant by that is, you know, it's a bigger picture if it's our fate to die at a certain time in our lives, but everyone can find that place of deep peace, acceptance, relaxation. And I think the sound for me is it's doing that. And what I noticed and what I found with the hosp uh, hospice and the cancer patients was they found that place. And what would be present in the room after a sound bath, a sound healing, was only love. And, you know, to talk about it that way, but I think 
love is that element that we all need because that's an, a, an essential element to heal. Oh, I can't hear you. I'm not sure what happened. Uh, you've collaborated with many um, notable figures in the fields of spirituality and sound healing. How have these collaborations influenced uh, your work and the development of sacred vibrations? Oh, so, you know, I think as a singer, I, I because you learn and I started studying, studying singing at age 11. My teacher is still alive today. She's 102 um, she dubbed the voice of Ava Gardner in the movie Showboat, and she used to dub for Lucille Ball and that Warren Smith, and she was married to a great jazz pianist, Paul, Paul Smith, who used to play for Ella Fitzgerald and Sammy Davis Jr. And so I think that, gosh, uh, ask me again, how, how has it been with the notable, yeah. <laughs> I think that being immersed in music and singing since I'm 11 taught me that we each have our own unique vibrational signature. So your timbre is different than mine and you're here to bring something through your vibration that's very unique to you, right? And I think it's important that everyone understands you are a valuable member of the bigger orchestra, right? And, you know, somebody may be a flute, somebody may be a violin, somebody may be the piano, somebody may be the conductor, but we all need to work together in this kind of collaborative way. And music and the metaphors of music, I think we talk so much about tuning and about harmony. And right now we're experiencing chaos. We're experiencing so much grief and so much in our world that we just say, Bah, what can we possibly do? And so when I work with people, it's about how do I tune myself? How do I tune my own human instrument? How do I bring my own light to shine freely and so that it nurtures me and it nurtures those around me? I think that that's, that's been a very important thing that I learned as a very young singer. And then to be able to share the platform with um, renowned scientists and people in the, in the field, such as Dr. Joe Dispenza, Doc, uh, Greg Braden, Dr. Bruce Lipton, Dr. Sue Martyr, and to stand uh, along those people and play music, I learned so much about, you know, what is energy and that everything is energy. We're energy and we're energy that gets compressed into a human form and we're actually sound vibration and light. And then to stand next to someone like Dr. Daniel J. Levitin, who's a very famous neuroscience scientist, is, is also, it's like we're bringing together a platform and a communication between different genres and different people. And music is that medium that holds us together. Every human being understands it. Everyone. I think at this point, I would love for you to play some because... After that, I want to get into your book. So okay. can you play a little bit for us? Thank you. Yeah, look at this beautiful studio of hers with all these bowls. It's beautiful. Thank you. So what I have here is what, what I call, it's a chakra set. So just take a listen. about this in the book. So these are the seven main chakras in the body and this one is on the top, what we call chakra eight. So just have a listen. If you're able to just close your eyes for a moment and slow down your breath. Made of this sound. 
begin to slow down our thinking mind. you to gently bring the palms of your hands together, rubbing them to generate heat, feeling that electric body that you are, the electricity that we are, and then gently begin to caress your cheeks. You can stroke your hands through your scalp, gently tap your chest, your belly, your hips, your thighs. Oh, and then giving a big stretch and opening your eyes. So maybe for some of you that was your first sound experience. I hope it was relaxing for you. I hope it was meditative. And I look forward to sharing so much more with this crystalline sound and music as medicine. I want more. I want more. <laughs> <laughs> that was a mini. That was just an appetizer. <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much. Oh. Yeah. We need this now, Valerie. There's there really is so much turmoil and so much concern wherever we are in the world. Um, but particularly in America right now, it's there's just we need to find a way to quicken ourselves, come into our our core and really feel grounded and very um, yeah attuned to this frequency of love. We, we've got to find that way to unify. Yeah. I'm going to slowly but surely get into talking about your book, Sacred Vibrations. And you must be proud. It it explores the transformation, uh, transformative power of sound. 
Um, what are the core themes and principles that you discuss in the book and how do they relate to the science and spirituality of sound therapy? You know, as I, as I started to write the book, there was just, there was so much that I wanted to share because A, I've had a life immersed in music. I started on Broadway when I was 19. Um, and B, you know, had been exploring the, the bowls for 18 years, as I said, and, and then uh, watched how sound and music, I'm also a professor of voice, watched how that would transform people. But it really wasn't until Dylan's death that I dove deep in and you know, quickly became friends and colleagues with leading people in the field of science and spirituality. And they asked me to play my music at, at their events. And so in the book, I talk about the history of sound and why sound has been used pretty much as a, as a, a balm, a medicine in every culture since the beginning of time. I talk about how, how you play the bowls, what's important to have in the structure of, of the bowls. And um, working through the whole book, are, there's little um, things we created called sound RXs. So there are stories about um, sound prescriptions, stories about the practitioners that I've trained around the world, about my own work, what's happened for us with children, with autism, with veterans, with cancer patients, with hospice, what kinds of things have we experienced? And knowing that these are anecdotal, there's no, there's no um, scientific work yet with the bulls and we're actually starting that. So I've partnered with Minerva Institute, which is up in San Francisco and it's been voted for three years in a row, the most innovative university in the world. And I know if Dylan was here, he would have loved to go to Minerva. They go and they study in, in different countries around the world. So the young people have a residency and they learn what it's like to be a universal citizen, right? And I love that principle. So um, there's a lab that began last year uh, to begin studying really music, the brain, health and wellness and we're, we're working with right now an experiment to work with the singing bowls um yeah and throughout the book is threaded wisdom from different colleagues um dr daniel levitin again neuroscientist has woven his magic throughout the book um dr sue martyr uh wrote the foreword jonathan goldman who's a pioneer in sound healing has added his sound wisdom so, and then um, there's different musicians such as Victor Wooten, five-time Grammy award-winning bass player, who's also threaded throughout the book, and Jonavi Harrison, who's a beloved Kirtan singer, Janae Aiko, who I've had the privilege to coach and help her bring Crystal Singing Bowls into her pop music, which has been amazing because her music is reaching millions of people, right? And I think to really watch this whole movement unfold it's um at, towards the end of the book i ask um what is the future and how are we creating the future where is music going so like can you imagine let's just say lin-manuel miranda who wrote hamilton would write you know uh, a sound healing musical right and people just go and they have this incredible experience like where are we going with sound and why is it so important in today's world and then threaded throughout of course are all the different miracles with with my son and the miracles of communication this is this is one picture it's hard to see and we've created a video so at the end of the book um, you have QR uh, QR code that you can um, access uh, special meditations and this film so here's this at the end of the book there's a, a QR code that leads you to a, a site with content um, that picture I showed you uh, it was on Easter Sunday a week after Dylan had died and I went down to the beach and there was a little rainbow, uh, an angel rainbow that appeared for like a minute and then it was gone and I had enough time to, to take a few pictures. So those miracles of sharing with people that we are energy, everything's energy, there is a bridge, sound can help us move into a place of higher consciousness or higher awareness or spirituality or God, however you want to name it. But once again, sound has the ability to quiet our mind and we become more and more and more of who we truly are. So there's a lot of different themes in there. And uh, I talk about um, just the, the structure of how, you know, what's the, the structure of 
the chakra system, why is that important? And um, personally, I tell stories about the different cancer patients. And um, yeah, it's a mix. It's a mix of science and theory and uh, wisdom and personal experiences and what I call these these miracles of communication from my son. Yeah. The key modalities you cover in the book is sound baths with alchemy, uh, crystal singing bowls. Can you explain how these sound baths work and what specific benefits they offer for physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being? Yeah, I mean, I've experienced people just in regular audiences. Let's say there's not big, big traumas or illnesses that they're dealing with. Some they say, Gerald and I became so focused and I was so clear about what, what my next step is or in the cancer patients that they come to a place of um, this deep relaxation and acceptance. Um, or veterans, I, there's one story I tell about um, a group of veterans that I played for in Los Angeles that one of the sergeants, a female, jumped up afterwards and she said, I have been given every medication known to man and I have never experienced and felt what I just felt in that sound bath. And, you know, and she was talking about she's seen war, she's seen her colleagues and friends die, she's been raped, she's been everything, right? And she, it was just so spontaneous how she jumped up and, and shared that. Another man, um, a cancer patient, also jumped up afterwards and said, I was home, I was in India on the rooftop with my mother and my siblings, and it was so real. You know, so people experience all different kinds of things. I'll always say that sound medicine, there's no one size fits all. You know, you might like to listen to Frank Sinatra. I might like to listen to uh, Beethoven. Somebody else might li like to listen to Pharrell or whatever. You know, it's, it's great music. And what I'm working with is a certain structure in the sound so that everybody feels safe. They feel held. So like, for example, it's not, you won't hear things like this. things like this right so things that are coherent things that create a structure where people feel safe and that's what I found in sound and in all our personal journeys like nobody can tell you how to go through your journey that you're struggling with whether it's trauma um, whether it's addiction, whether it's anxiety, whether it's sleeplessness, whether it's, you know, wanting to feel more confident, whatever it is that each of us are going through, trying to process um, physical pain, nobody can tell us, okay, take this exact, you know, sonic remedy, take this exact pill, it's going to do it. It's healing is a bigger, it's a bigger picture. And I think that's what I love to explore that I know that if I can create safety and I can create beauty and I can help people to come deep inside themselves and breathe and breathe deeply and have sacred space to feel. And that's why I think that the title Sacred Vibrations, because it's, it's not just, you know, what I just played for you. It's not that. It's done with integrity and it's done with love. And that invites each of us to drop in and feel. I mean, that's what happened to me. I didn't want to feel the grief. I wanted to push that away, but I knew that if I, if I didn't feel it, I could never heal it. Right. And you know, so much in our culture right now is just fast, 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 fast. Right. And we want the answers right now. But if we take the time, that is, that's where healing and magic happens. Love it. You've, you've, Told that you've, you've told us about the audience that you've intended this book to be for you and how readers can incorporate, you know, the teachings and the practices from the book into their daily wellness routines. You've told us, you know, what inspired you to write the book um, and what you hope the readers will take away from the book um, through your years of experience as a sound bath. Uh, practitioner, what challenges have you encountered and what insights have you gained about the healing power of sound? I think to trust the process. So there's definitely been, there was once 
twice where a cancer patient had just undergone chemo and the sound was too much for them. So I, I think, you know, I've experienced so many different things. There was one time where uh, an, an executive for a big corporation um, just jumped up after and he said, Geraldine, what kind of voodoo did you do? He said, I've never been able to quiet my mind and not fall asleep. You know, normally I'll just, I'm out. But he said, I was wide awake, but I had no thoughts. So I, I feel like, you know, again, there's no one size fits all for each of us. And the most important thing is how do I create safety so that people feel like they can drop into a trauma? They can have a memory of abuse. They can work with that and help it to come to the light. And I think that's, yeah. I think that's a big part of it is the sensitivity and integrity with which with which you create sound. Your work often blends classical music with high vibrational sound, as we know. How do you integrate these different elements in your healing sessions? And what role do they play in creating transformative experience for participants? You know, once again, it's different for each person. So depending what, I once had a, a cancer patient who had undergone radiation and she, she was a teacher and she kept getting hot and cold flashes, hot and cold flashes that she couldn't control 15, 17 times a day. And just to give her a deep sense of relaxation and to let her have safe space to speak about it and to feel it, it started to shift. So again, I'm not a medical doctor. I just know the power of music and how to work with the structure and the theory and the history of music to create this environment for people. But it's really, it's, there's no magic answer. There's no one size fits all. And it's really leaning in and meeting and collaborating with who's in front of me, whether it's an individual or whether it's a group. You know, and the power of setting an intention is very important. You know, what is it that's up for you? You know, I want to find peace of mind. I've been very troubled or whatever it is, whatever your personal intention is, that intention is, is going to be a big part of how we work with sound together in collaboration. Amazing. Well, I, as we wind down here, I want you to tell our readers and our audience how they can reach you. Um, I know already um but they don't so please let us know here you can find me at crystalcadence.com and that's pretty much where everything is we have also um we have uh this card deck which is a, a really fun product that came out first with hay house this is um an oracle deck that each of the cards has a as a qr code on it and you put your phone on there and you can hear the sound of your card and their beautiful beautiful illustrations um, artwork by Suzanne Bourne. Um, yeah, so the main thing is crystalcadence.com and we have a big YouTube channel, Crystal Cadence by Geraldine Glass. So there's over a hundred um, free videos and meditations for you to listen to. And we have a members portal if people are very interested in, in joining and becoming a part of that and having regular meetings and sound baths and conversations and speakers. And then uh, this week, uh, there's events that are starting throughout Los Angeles at Astrogong on Wednesday, the 24th, at Barnes & Noble at the Grove on the 23rd, um, in Redondo Beach on the 27th, and we're going down to San Diego at Warwick's and up to Santa Barbara at the Unity Church. So if anyone can join live at these events, wonderful. And um, if not, I'd love to connect with you. Our social media is Crystal Cadence LA. So I just wish for everybody the peace and the harmony and the grounding and the centering and the healing that especially crystalline sound can bring us. What a great half hour it's been with you and, and I hope we can do more. And our uh, YouTube channel, The Hollywood Times Official, The Hollywood dot Times is our Instagram and Hollywood Times dot today is our um website and uh can't wait to meet you in person yeah me too thank you so much for All right. allowing this interview to happen yes thank you i feel better <laughs> <laughs> thanks carolyn have a great rest of your day thank you Ralph.
Bye-bye. Bye.